Hey guys, it's Erica here from Climate Ready Home, and today I'm going to be talking about milkweed. If you go to your big box center, garden center, um, you're probably going to find milkweed right now. Unfortunately, the kind of milkweed you're going to find is something called tropical milkweed. I'll put a picture here. Um, this is a milkweed that is not native to the United States, and there are a bunch of problems when it comes to planting this kind of milkweed in your landscape, and I will be talking about that today. Now we are converting our front yard from a lawn to native habitat and part of that is planting a milkweed. Milkweed is the host plant for the monarch butterfly so a lot of people like to be planting this kind of stuff in their landscape because they want to see butterflies. Um, I am trying to do full native landscape and I'll put a, a few clips here of uh, what we're working with right now. Um, but because I couldn't find native milkweed as like a plant where I live, I did buy some seeds and I'm growing them up here and I'll insert a clip of um, what we have growing as well. Here, uh, the native milkweed is narrow leaf milkweed. And I think another one we're going to use is showy milkweed. I forget. I'll put the name here. Um, but And I will show you at the end of the video how to find which milkweed is native in your area. So you can order some seeds or hopefully order an actual plant so you can plant that in your landscape. So let's get started. So the very first reason why you should not be planting this in your landscape is tropical milkweed does not die back in most places. And this is a problem because we need to send signals to the monarch butterflies that they need to continue on to their migration. If they see that milkweed is, let's say, I don't know, it's going into winter time when it really should not be here, um, and the, the milkweed is really lush and growing really well, it's gonna think that, hey, it's breeding time, I'm gonna go and lay some eggs. So this is very, very confusing to the monarch butterflies. We really need to make sure that we aren't messing up this very intricate system that the ecosystem has created. Um, everything has evolved to work together and we need to not miss that up. So my second reason kind of goes with the first reason. Because the milkweed does not die back, there can be a buildup of something called OE. And I'll put the long name here. OE is a protozoan parasite um, that is carried from the butterfly and can be transferred onto the leaves. And what this does is it infects the caterpillars which then turn into butterflies, and it makes their wings deform, they have a lower body mass, it affects their, their lifespan, their mating success, and their flight ability. So this is a really big problem for butterflies. Now, because the, the tropical milkweed does not die back, there can be a buildup of this OE on the, on the leaves, um, and so then you can have, essentially, um, a poisonous plant. So it's a huge problem. Now, with the native milkweed, like for example, the narrow leaf milkweed, um, it does die back in the winter. So every spring, every spring, I believe when it comes back, uh, it comes back with fresh leaves. Um, so we don't have any OE on those leaves because it's they're brand new. So that is the second reason you don't want to be planting tropical uh, milkweed in your landscape. Now the third reason is because tropical milkweed is not native to your area, um, it's going to take more resources to keep it alive. So my front yard native landscape, I do not have to water or fertilize or mess with it because all of the plants are native to right here. Um, so it can take care of itself. It's, it's evolved to deal with the climate. Um, it's evolved to deal with the amount of water that comes from the sky. Um, and same thing with the milkweed. If we put a, a plant that is not native to here, we're going to have to to use our resources to keep that plant alive. Right, and the last one's kind of a big one and it relates to climate change. Um, tropical milkweed, for some reason, when it is exposed to high temperatures, it creates a toxin. And now this toxin is present in all milkweeds and it's actually beneficial to the butterfly. Um, but in high concentrations, it's toxic and it can kill the butterfly. So this is really important to think of as, as we're um, kind of feeling the effects of climate change and our, we're going to start having those days where the temperature is going to be rising. Um, we need to start thinking about uh, the landscape and what we're doing and how the plants are going to be reacting to it. And the milkweed creating this toxin is kind of worst case scenario because you can have, if you have all tropical milkweed plants in your yard and you start having those really high temperatures, um, you're, it's like poison, right? You're, the caterpillars are eating poison. Um, so this is definitely something you do not want in your yard, especially as we start going into the higher temperatures of summer right now. I am dying in this room. And I don't know how high a temperature, let me look that up real quick. Cardenolide, here we go. Okay, so I can't really find how high the temperature needs to get until the milkweed plant creates this toxin, but the toxin is um, cardenolide. 
cardenolide. <laughs> I'll put that right here as well. So scientists have found that the native milkweed does not have this increased concentration of carnitolide. Um, it only happens, from my understanding, to the tropical milkweed. So we have tropical milkweed that is from a different place, not from the United States. We bring it here, put it into our landscape. It, it's going to be reacting to our climate differently. And as our, time, our climate starts to get warmer, it's going to be creating this toxin um, and um, can can really do some damage in the monarch population. Now, in terms of preparing for climate change, um, I believe that we should be preparing our homes to deal with the effects. So here we have wildfires. I believe that we all should be um, trying to prepare our homes for wildfires. Um, but not only that, I also think we should be preparing our landscape for climate change as well. It's not just us who are going to be feeling the change, it's also the, the, the wildlife, um, including bugs, right, including butterflies. So in order to help this population through this change in our climate, um, we really do need to be paying more attention uh, into what we are putting into our landscape and really help the wildlife along. We've already taken so much of their habitat away and I figure the, the least we can do is take a little part of our property and kind of hand it back over to the, the wildlife. Um, and that's all I wanted for today. Actually, I do want to show you how to find um, which milkweed plants are native in your area if you live in California. I just posted a video last week about Calscape and how to use Calscape to find plants that are native in your area. You would, I would use the same exact method. Okay, sorry guys, my memory card on my camera filled up. I just wanted to say, um, use Calscape to find the milkweed plant. It'll come up with all the plants there um, listed. And if you can't find the plant itself, there are places where you can find the seeds. Um, the Theodore Payne Foundation has a really good selection. Etsy has a really great selection as well. So I hope that helped you guys. And I think that's all I have to say for today. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.